Hunt Fish Shoot is back out on the range today, and this week we are bringing you guys the Springfield XDM Elite Compact 3.8 inch variant. This also has the X Dragonfly Red Dot. So if you like what you see today, I want you to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been For all of us here at Hunt Fish Shoot, it's been a little while since any of us have really shot any form of the Springfield XDMs or anything like that. Myself in particular, I think I'm probably the only one that had shot any of them. I had an XDM 9mm uh, shoot, I mean, close to 10 years ago now. Uh, haven't had one or anything like that since. Truthfully, just wasn't that interested in them just because everything that came to the market, I shoot Glocks really well, so I like them, and then SIGs what I'm issued for duty. But I wanted to pick something up, and we wanted to try the Springfield XDM, these Elite Series that are coming out because of some of the features that they put on them. It's stuff that you're not seeing, and in addition to that, they're extremely reasonable in price. So with this model in particular, the big upgrades that you have with the Elite model is the trigger. The trigger from Springfield, uh, they're saying it's the best one on the market. I can tell you it feels really, really good. Uh, it's a really nice trigger from initial onset and the feeling of it. Can I say it's the best one on the market? No, I can't. Probably a very close third. And the only reason I say that is because you have the Walther PDP that's out there now, and then you also have the Canics, and they have just excellent triggers. This one is very, very similar to those. And it's just, it is a really nice trigger though. It's flat, and I like the curve and the texture and everything they have with it going on there, and it's bladed. But it goes back, uh, you hit a somewhat defined wall you can definitely tell that that's the point where you're gonna get close to breaking the trigger but you actually start cocking that striker a little bit and you feel a little bit of mush and it only it goes very very slow if you just go into it and that breaks at a very clean wall once you get to it it's short and then has a very nice short reset defined wall reset everything like that that stuff feels great like I said again this out of the box price range and everything like that for things that are around the price of this which speaking of price is about 820 is what these go for with the red dot on it which is an excellent value but the trigger wise price wise it's it's in there i mean yeah like i said again it's not as good as the pdp that that trigger i don't i haven't seen a pistol yet that's striker fire that has touched that but this is a nice trigger and then we're going to get into something else too which is the magwell with the magwell on there it's a little bit short for my hands. I do have large hands, but you can take it off. So if it's something you don't feel comfortable shooting on there, just take it off. For myself, it seems okay. Like it's a little bit short, but it feels really nice with the magazines when you're inserting them, especially, which anybody that's ever used a magwell or extended or flared magwell, you can really tell. And with this one, it is nice. They fit in there. You got your 14 round magazine, which really there are 13 with a plus one extension on there. And they fit really well. They slide in nicely, with, especially with the steel mags from Springfield. Big fan of the magazines they make. They're, they're a very nice quality. So I definitely like those quite a bit. But you do get two of them with the pistol. Again, two 14 round magazines. Again, this has a 3.8 inch barrel on it. So it's slightly shorter than a Glock 19 barrel by only really a 10th of an inch. So not a whole lot there as far as that goes. But this really could be a very nice, easily concealable pistol, um, which brings us to something else. They're pretty tough right now to find a holster. I've struggled for the last you know, week or so trying to find one for this pistol. The reason for that being is because they have some out there for the XDM Elite, but they don't have them to where they have an Optus Cut or Optus Cut ready. And some of the ones that are offered that I found, I'm just not a fan of those holsters. They're pretty low quality. And I know that from experience. So let's get into also this Hex Dragonfly. The Hex Dragonfly, has a actual button on the side, which you saw a review from the RDP that had no button, it was auto adjusting. So this one, you can actually adjust the brightness and turn it off and do all that stuff on your own. It does have a 16 hour auto shut off feature with it, which I do like, and then it will shake awake or turn on for you. Uh, but outside of that, it is nice. Uh, it's got a button, smaller, it's just up and down, very similar how the Delta Point Pro from Loophole works, where you just push the button to go up and you reach the top point and then push it to go back down. Nice viewing window looks clear the glass is clear these hex optics so far they're very impressive and if you weren't to get this on this gun at 250 bucks it's a better deal in my opinion than your burst fast fire and the vortex venom are those like your top of the line red dots no they're not but this by far looks better than those durability wise i have no idea and i can't speak to whether it's as durable as you know your 
RMR, your Hollow Suns, and even the new Acro P2 that just came out. It's, it's probably not, but I can't really speak to say that it's not for sure. But overall, the build quality and everything like that looks good. A major downfall that I will say, as I look at this pistol, and you can see it immediately, is that you'll notice with your sight height on here, you cannot co-witness through the red dot. So that poses an issue. So it's something you have to keep in mind, but if you're gonna keep the red dot on here and you're gonna use this for defensive purposes, you're gonna have to change out those sights because your red dots, anything you add to a pistol, electronic, whatever, it could fail. And data and study has shown that that occurs. Why they didn't just put suppressor height sights on here to co-witness through this a lot like they did with the full size XDM Elite, I have no idea. I wish that that was the case. And hopefully I think with Springfield, they like to always innovate that they're gonna do that. And then finally with this pistol, is this fully ambidextrous, meaning it has a ambidextrous magazine release, something you don't have to swap left or right, it's just there on both sides. And then you also have an ambidextrous slide lock slide release on here. Very nice feature also with both of those, because if you're gonna shoot with your support hand or your strong hand, you don't have to worry about trying to flip things around or trying to work the pistol a different way, it's just there for you. So nice features in that. So I'm looking forward to shooting this today. I'm gonna tell you guys what I think, give you our opinion, and we'll wrap it up at the end. All right, we're loaded up here. Let's give us some shots down range. See how she's Yeah, that thing, trigger-wise, sweet. That is a, a really, really nice trigger on there. The gun, the recoil impulse and all that stuff, it shoots really well. I, it really does feel good. Uh, for a lot of times people, you know, they're concerned because of the bore axis and all that stuff. I'm so used to shooting a SIG 320 all the time that those pretty well known for having a fairly high bore axis. This can't really feel, or doesn't really feel much higher than that whatsoever. If anything, it might even be lower, but I mean, I think it shoots really good. Uh, Subcompact wise, or about this size, like I said, it's, it's a touch smaller than a Glock 19, but in this size range, it's a lot like the Canik uh, TP9 Elite SC we just shot, and also even the CZ P10S, and it's definitely on par at the very least with those two, and overall value with everything you're getting, I'm impressed. shot sequence what I did there was I just had 10 rounds in each magazine through a mag change in there but on this if you guys don't know this is an Opata this is a 50% target so the actual Opata size is 50% larger so ultimately you have to think of these circles as nearly you know twice the size of what they normally be so really with this pistol first time ever shooting this and you know I just hit 50 rounds with it today I, I'm happy I'm really happy with it it does shoot really really well and it's it's a tack driver, it really is. The bread dot on it, the dragonfly, seems really nice. I can't can't really think of anything negative to say about it at this point. Really just positive stuff and overall the gun is a dream to shoot. Yeah, that magwell on this thing is, is a, it's a, again, this thing has a ton of awesome features to it that a lot of other companies are really just not doing or they don't offer it in this price range. When you get into some of the other ones and you want some of those upgrade features, they're not generally there. And the magwell on this is really nice. And yeah, it kind of crunches my grip in there because I have larger hands, but I'm still able to shoot it just fine and I don't notice any issues. And another thing too, we'll get into it, is that the grip safety that Springfield uses on these XDMs, yeah, I wish they would probably just get rid of it. Uh, and just use the, the bladed trigger safety and be a little similar to the other companies. But what I can say is it doesn't take much at all to activate it. And I haven't noticed anything whatsoever to where it's not activating or having issues or anything like that. 
because it comes so far out and has a nice speed bump in there, it's a non-issue in my opinion. So to really complain about it legitimately, you can't. Uh, if you want to complain because you just don't like them, you can, but not an actual problem with the gun. So Magwell features, Red Dot, everything on it. This gun really is the full package, except for that main, main negative I talked about with the sights and how they're not quite the right height if you want to co-witness. Outside of that, sweet pistol. So I'm gonna shoot a little bit more today and then give you guys my closing thoughts. That's it, fellas. The XDM Elite from Springfield, the 3.8 inch compact variant with your Hex Dragonfly. What an awesome pistol. I'm truly impressed, because I, like I said, it's been so long since I got my hands on an XDM, and I'm glad I have. I think actually our cameraman, Joe, is gonna end up carrying this gun, and I think he should. This thing really feels really good in your hand. It shoots well, it's accurate, the trigger's nice on it, the mag release on it, and the slide lock or slide release on it, excellent. They're all so easy to do. Mag changes on this thing, is quite that of a full-size pistol. And dare I say, even as easy as my Staccato. So I'm a huge fan of this. So if you guys like what you saw today, I want you to like, comment, subscribe, and follow along next time with Hunt Fish Shoot.